Hello, welcome to the pedestrian's talk. Daniel Navas is an artist of the Carla team, and myself, Bernard Pina, I'm an engineer of the Carla team, and we are going to talk uh, a bit about the pedestrian and their implementations. We are going to talk about the pedestrian navigation, how, we, how to populate a map, how it works, some improvements with it, and a bit about the class hierarchy. And then Daniel Navas will talk about the pedestrian animations, about how is the model in the 3D software, how to import from Maya to Unreal Engine, and a bit about the blueprint of the pedestrians. Then we will see some limitations and the future work. So let's start with a video to see how the pedestrian shark right now how they look. We have adult and children. We have male and female with different clothes. They can cross the road through the crosswalks and they avoid each, each other. So they are great to populate a map. So let's talk about pedestrian navigation first. How to populate? How we can create pedestrians? Well, the first thing is to connect to the server, like this, and then get the world object. Then we have to find the blueprint of the pedestrian that we want to spawn. We can use this filter with the asterisk, so we will get all the pedestrians available for us. Then we have to do similar thing to find the controller that we will apply to each pedestrian. This controller is the one who will control the pedestrian to move from point to point. Then we have to create a point, transform a transform, and the location we can use this method get random location from navigation. This method will return a point always available for navigation for the pedestrian so usually it's a point that is always in a sidewalk and then we can move the pedestrian a bit up so to avoid collisions with the road now we are going to spawn the pedestrian first we need to choose one from the list of pedestrians that we get here we we choose one at random then we spot the actor in the position we define here and then we wait for a tick just to be sure that the actor exists in the server and now we have to spawn the controller so we use the similar function spawn actor with the control the blueprint also a neutral point this this is not important because the controller need to go attach it to this actor, to this pedestrian. Also we wait for another tick so the controller exists and from this point we can use the controller method, for example the start that will add the new pedestrian to the crowd and also we can use the method go to location to make the pedestrian walk to that position following a route and we can use the similar method that we used before get random location from navigation this is a video running the script uh, 200 times and we will see that the pedestrians are spawning around the map and they start to walk to random points through all the map and if they need to cross the road they they will do that always on a cross walk okay let's move now let's talk about how this works well we use a an open source library, the Recast the Tour library. It's uh, an open source, it's in GitHub here in, in this link. 
and we use this library because we want all the calculations about the pedestrians are in the client side not in the server side so the server don't need to calculate anything about the pedestrian navigation so the, the recast comes with a GUI, a user interface where we can import our geometry or uh, about the map it's in OBJ format then we can define and specify some parameters and then we can start calculating all the, para all, all the geometry needed for the pathfinding algorithms once this is finished the calculation we can save a binary file with the final results so at the end we only need to load these final results to be able to navigate the pedestrians but has some limitations for us the recast one is the size of the map uh, cannot be huge because it uses some grid voxelization to convert the map geometry to internal structures so probably we have to to improve this part and also it's difficult to define different areas for the pedestrians for example grass, sidewalk, crosswalk or the roads because with the GUI we have to define by hand uh, a polygon, closed polygon and then all the triangles inside will be of that specific area but that was not very helpful for us so to use the recast detour we have to make some improvements the first thing we had was a plugin uh, in the Unreal Editor it's a Carla exporter that will export, will convert the map that you have on the editor to OBJ format ready for recast to ingest also we create an application the recast builder that without any user interface just with an input parameter, the map, in OBJ format, exported from the Carl exporter, for example, and it will generate the final binary that we need. So this is great for automatic generation of the binary file. Also this binary file will be saved in the server side and will be sent to all the clients that need the pedestrian. Also, we improve the way we can define the areas where the pedestrians can walk. They are mainly four areas. One is the road, the sidewalk, the crosswalk, and the grass. So to define all of these areas, we have to specify a specific nomenclature. For example, when in the 3D software or in Unreal, we have to specify starting the name convention for that object for example this road that we have selected start by road road that means for the navigation pedestrians that uh, this will be a road area so the same for the sidewalk we have selected one and starts by the road sidewalk the same for the crosswalk road crosswalk and also for the grass the grass are bigger areas that are like uh, secondary sidewalks the pedestrian can walk there but will be not the first option to walk so let's take a more technical look to this in this image we see the we have uh, several f pedestrians and each one have a controller attached to it this controller that we used in the script before using these commands have uh, four methods that we can use the start and the stop is to add or remove the pedestrian from, from the crowd so it's managed uh, automatically also the method to make a pedestrian walk to a point and also if we want to fix a maximum speed for different pedestrians and also the controller just to clarify that needs to be attached to each pedestrian and this is the class hierarchy we can start from the, from the bottom 
we have for example two actors with their controller attached and this controller connects directly to the walker navigation class that is the one in charge of the updating the crowd the pedestrians so he needs to check if a pedestrian has died or exists if if it doesn't exist then will will be removed from the crowd also he needs to update the vehicle in the in this in the map so because the pedestrians try to avoid the pe the vehicles and also update the position of these pedestrians then walker navigation needs some low level functions from this class the navigation this is the class that will use the recast library and also will receive the binary file for the navigation from the server so the server will send this content for the corresponding map and the navigation class will load this binary file to the recast library to use all the functionality about navigation also we have two more classes the walker manager and the walker event the walker manager is the one that will define the route that will follow each pedestrian to to go to a point and also will create some specific events like for example a stop and check that this event happens when a pedestrian needs to cross the road through the crosswalk then the pedestrian will stop and check if a vehicle is in front and will wait until the way is free to walk and that's all for the pedestrian navigation now Daniel Navas will carry on the talk with the pedestrian animations Greetings, I'm Daniel Navas I'm a developer from the art team and I'll give you some information about how to import pedestrian models and animation clips also about the Pawn Actor class and the way the navigation's logic determines the displayed animation sequences through the animation's blueprint event graph, anim graph and blend space tool. Pedestrians in Unreal 4 are Pawn Actors. They are defined as a combination of a skin mesh and a skeletal hierarchy. They represent humans and they are subject to navigation's logic. Also, we have the option to control them manually. We have four base models, two adults, male and female, and two kids, boy and girl. Each base model has multiple clothing variations. The polycon is about 10 20,000 triangles. For the shaders, we work with PBR textures. This includes clothing, subsurface skin shader, and a specific hair shader. About animations, we use an animation set that includes idle, walking, running, and pivot cycles. This skeletal hierarchy is made of 66 bones. As I said, all pedestrian models share the same skeleton of 66 bones. They share both hierarchy and naming conventions, but they have different sizes and proportions. This skeleton offers control for a biped model. There's no facial expression, only the eyes which are controlled by bones. We work with FBX files. For pedestrian models, both skins, meshes and skeletons are exported from Maya in a single file. FBX file format can include data on geometry, skeletal hierarchies, animated channels, and vertex skinning weights. Imported skeletons must be compatible and assigned to the SK pedestrian genera and asset. This is our standard pedestrian skeletons definition in Unreal. This definition includes information to generate the skeletal mesh and physics asset. Animation sequences are exported as independent FBX files. This should contain the skeleton and animated data. Inside Unreal, they are defined by the escape pedestrian general asset. When imported, the FBX must be assigned to this definition just like the skin geometry. The result is an animation sequence asset. We name our actors as BP Walker. Pounds in Unreal are the way to implement rigged pedestrian actors and both connect them to navigation logic or control them manually. Collision detection can be added at the Pounds capsule. Further detection boxes can be added. We use extra added collisions as a death trigger and for car proximity detection. The event graph of an animation blueprint is the logic that rules the pound's states and behaviors according to the events and function calls from the navigation logic, thus determining which animation sequence is applied. It is an old graph and determines the anim graph and blend space functionality. The central 
core determines the pedestrian speed yeah, and is, it is used for translation uh, animation sequences and those within a square uh, determines the orientation and whether the pedestrian is static or not The AnimGraph's animation blueprint is a finite state machine. It's another hierarchy where we connect the different clips and define the interaction between each other. Each transition has a specific conditions to swap between states back and forth. Translation clips are implemented through the Blend Space tool. Orientation clips are implemented directly. These tools blend different animation sequences. First, we read the actor speed's information from navigation's logic through the event graph. We use it to blend the idle sequence with translation sequences such as walk and run. Right now the pedestrians walk from point to point, just to populate the map. Each client manages its own crowd, so pedestrians of different clients don't avoid each other. We have a small set of animations restricted by the event graph and logic. We want to implement in the future new events for pedestrians, for example wait for green traffic lights at crosswalks, and custom animations sent from the client. Also, we are planning to adapt Recast and Detour to be able to handle big maps. And finally, we want to improve our pedestrians' visuals and animation sequences. We are studying an approach from photography references or 3D scan data. Also, we want to implement new animation states. And that's all about pedestrian navigation. We hope the points covered have been useful. And don't miss that the slides are accessible for downloading. Thank you.